coming back again. Hey, two weeks in a row. Don't call it a comeback. Let me turn the cedar off. Sorry. <clears throat> Cards here for GM Games, bringing you some more Draft Day Sports College Basketball 2024 Early Access. Uh, I did, when I logged in, there was another little update. Took about two minutes to um, get installed and downloaded, so not sure exactly what's changed. Didn't even bother jumping on the message boards to see it. It's usually some small stuff. Uh, and if I'm missing something huge, we'll figure it out. So, back with our Louisville Cardinals here, March of 2026. And I might have lied to you guys a little bit. I told you that I was going to clean the rest of this uh, off season up off stream because I just didn't have the heart to do it last time. You know, after we after we joined the Agalia Club, uh, I just didn't have the heart to do anything else the other night. But I didn't want to go through the off season because since that time, I did drop a video uh, for GM Games about the top new features in this year's game, and really the coolest feature comes up at the end of the season. The coolest new addition, I mean to say. So I didn't want to rob you guys of the coolest new edition and see how we worked through that because uh, I did just kind of speed through it uh, when we did it for the, the new feature video. But we'll get there. <clears throat> and that's obviously it's going to be the, the transfers and early declarations. So we'll see what happens on that front. Uh, I know what it looked like when I simmed through it last time, but I didn't save that. This goes back right to March 17th. You can see it right here. We're exactly where we left off last time. So we actually still need to play and sim out the rest of this year. Uh, yeah, let's just sim out the whole year. I was going to say we can take a look at the Final Four and all that sort of thing, but I don't really care. I'm, I'm bitter. I'm still bitter. It's a week later. I'm still bitter about the loss. Uh, still pretty frustrating. It, well, I guess it goes both ways because I didn't expect that team – to really compete for a national championship. You know, we lost a few games throughout the year. I think I said somewhere around, I, I rewatched a little bit of the stream just to see what happened. And at some point I called it in the middle of the season. I was like, this, this team's not real. Like we're not for real. And then they just kept winning games. And so, you know, to some degree it was a little bit of fool's gold uh, at some point. But, uh, you know, live and learn, move on. We've got some depth. We're certainly moving in the right direction. And I think, uh, you know, these guys, those the starters are moving into, what, year three now? And we're, we're going to have some depth that are sophomores. So we don't necessarily have senior leadership yet. Uh, we're not exactly looking at one and duns yet. Uh, but we're heading in the right direction, and we'll get there. Maybe tonight. We'll see. Daryl Griffith, 2.0 win. Breeze. Woo, love Dr. Duncan's time, baby. Uh, we'll see. We'll see, you know, uh, I don't know. It might have been uh, in the CBGM, Howard Barr. I don't know if you're around, if you caught what Howard Barr was doing. Uh, he was a little Daryl-esque, might I say. Yeah, what's up, B-Love? Glad to have you back in the stream, bud. All right, so we got the tournament out of the way. Let's look and see. Let's, what's tourney? And this tourney watch is going to be the bubble, right? Do we have... I want to see. Uh, let's let's take a look. What's this button do? Can we get a recap? We probably can. I, I'm not seeing how to do it right off. What's the league media say? Nah. Standings, tourney watch. I'm sure that there's a way to go back and look at it. I didn't want to do that tourney recap thing because it's like an automated review. I just didn't feel like it. Uh, let's just go through. We'll move on to awards we can get some acc awards maybe let's i guess we'll take a look at the national awards first who derricus hunter the norton the mop the wolverine studios player of the year the defensive player of the year and tommy lloyd as coach takes home coach of the year and he wasn't a freshman who is this guy he's a sophomore okay crazy scoring Heck of a rebounder, good steals. Looks like he's a shooter. Really good defender, bucket getter. Yeah, he's got the defensive badge. He's got the cleanup badge. He's 6'3". He's a 6'3 forward. Is, he, he's, is that a small forward with the cleanup badge? 
I don't think I've ever seen that before. All right. Well, that looks like a player. All right, so those are the individual awards nationally. We can take a look at first-team All-Americans. Nothing for us. Nothing for us. We didn't really figure that there was going to be. Let's jump over to the ACC. We did pick up Coach of the Year. Uh, no, so no first-teamers. We were one seed. We didn't have a single first-team All-Conference player. And Chris Cole is our lone uh, second-team all-conference guy. Chris Cole, a freshman, so it'll be nice if he sticks around. Is he going to stick around? Yeah, he was ranked number 72 nationally, so Chris Cole will be back. Uh, and even as a freshman, he's a second-team all-ACC all type player. So looks like he's got a real nice shot, decent rebounder. No badges yet. Maybe that'll develop. Heck of an athlete. So, hey, hey he's 6'6". Six, six. Maybe there's your Dr. Duncan Stein, right? You never know. I wonder, like, I wonder how much of that inside. So, like, in this year's game, you have the mid-range and the outside broken down so that you can see what's what it is from three versus what it is from, you know, 16, 17 feet. I wonder if there's not also a breakdown for the inside of, like, dunks versus post moves. You know, like, there's, there's probably something behind the scenes. Like, if this behind the scenes was separate, this probably is too, right? Like, how else, how else do you differentiate between, like, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar versus Dominique Wilkins. Because they could both finish close to the basket in very different ways. So there's there's got to be a behind-the-scenes breakdown there. It'd be interesting to see it on Cole. Got a kid in your Chicago State save that's leading the nation from Bellarmine. Yeah, Bellarmine getting on the map. They were a new addition to the game like two or three years ago, I think. Yeah, Bellarmine, I, I would assume, you know, I don't live in Louisville anymore, so I don't get all the local news, but I know uh, one of Denny Crum's longtime assistants, Scotty Davenport, was coaching at Bellarmine forever, so I don't know if he still is or not, but he was a heck of a coach, and I always root for Bellarmine. All right, let's move on from the awards. We don't need to see any more of that. coaching carousel let's check it out i always like to just see the top jobs that are open obviously i'm not leaving the ville got the gear we're ready uh but i like to see which which head coach oh all right iu iu anybody that hasn't done an iu save you should do it it's always pretty fun even though like in real life i don't care for iu i certainly don't care for tom crean back and forth on bob knight um but in game, it's a cool save to play. Auburn, I don't know. I don't know that there's anything. Else. Oh, you know what is interesting is Georgetown sitting down there at two and a half stars. Talk about a sleeping giant that needs to be brought back to the forefront. If you're looking for a cool save, go grab Georgetown. Bring them back, baby. And of course, I'm still looking for the YouTuber or the streamer or whoever that does the San Francisco Don save. Like th that one has to be there, right? Back-to-back -back championships in the 50s with Wilt. Absolutely nothing since then. Salukis are available. Yeah, they are. All right, staff hiring. Let's see. Let's check our inbox, see if any of them said that they're leaving. Oh, oh, Josh Jameson got a offer. Okay, so the rest of – that's the last of Kenny Payne's staff. Go ahead and get out of here. Season review. Great job. 60 – oh, 64 to 65. That would have been a big jump if we'd had a real tournament run. Even getting bounced in the first round by a 16 seed, we improved a little. Can you imagine if that was an eight elite eight final four run? Like we'd probably be low to mid 70s at this point. We would have probably got back to like Louisville's natural prestige level, and then we could start pulling that rubber band the other way. Um, yeah, George, absolutely. George sounds a sleeping giant save for sure. All right, let's see. So we need, I believe Jameson was our scout, but he could have been pra running practices. Let's check. Yeah, he was running practices. So our second assistant is a pretty good scout. We need a, I don't like this particularly. I'd almost like to fire him. 
Because, like, I just feel like you can pay so much less for the scouting. I want somebody to develop the players. I would rather pay somebody to develop the players, whereas if I'm stuck paying a third assistant twenty, twenty two thousand, you're not going to be able to get as high of a quality of coach. Obviously, I'm putting the most money into my recruiter. Uh, nothing's changed on that front. I still have the same philosophy on my coaches, but it is what it is. We got to grab a third assistant, and we need him to be able to develop players. So this should be the list of, list of everyone who's interested in being a third assistant that we can actually make offers to. Let's see. Do it, it's ranked by the player development ability. Do any of them have good? There's a pretty good defensive coach. Another good defensive coach. Cameron Dollar. Why does that name sound familiar? Was he a real player? I wonder if that's... I feel like he was a real player. So maybe he's now coaching somewhere and he's in the mod because of that. 36 and 42 with 51 player development. Assistant coach at Rutgers. Can we grab him? Nah, he's a second assistant. Probably not. Um. Okay. Aaron Smith. 25000 for four years to be my third assistant. See what you got. Yeah, so Cameron Dollar did play at UCLA. That's what I thought. So he must be a coach somewhere now. All right, Aaron Smith, we got him. So let's see if we can run this out now. Or if one of our guys is going to get picked off and we got to hire somebody else. He was a guard, right? Cameron Dollar? J Slim coming with the info. I'm sure he'll uh, let us know in chat. All right, so this is the reason that I didn't clean up the off season. I didn't want to leave you guys out of this bit, so we can delete all emails here. View these year-end tasks. So I would like a budget increase. Now, here is where I've got no experience in this, so you guys are going to learn with me. Uh, here's where we got to figure it out. And I tell you what, you know, I, I showed this when I did the new feature video um, over the weekend, I think it was. I don't know exactly when Chris got it edited and put up. Um, he's an assistant at Washington now. All right, Cameron Dollar, assistant at Washington. Good to know. Staying out there on the West Coast. Um, the draft plans are all exactly the same, and the transfer probability, as best as I can remember, it looks the same. You guys can check the stream, go back to the um, the top features video that I did and see if any of this is different. Uh, I remember very clearly Brennan Lyons was a higher percent to transfer than anyone else, and we had about six guys looking like they may or may not transfer. And that's exactly what we've got here. So... I'm just going to assume Lyons is gone. Center, so Keith Smith is going to leave, which, well, he's thinking about leaving, which really tells me, and I said it all through the last stream, I probably should have started Jamie Davenport. He seemed to have something magic all year, even as a backup. He was really outperforming Smith, so that's on me. We probably would have had a better year uh, if had I made a better decision there. So Alice Morris... Another power forward also looking to transfer out. Um, I mean, we have Tremaine Grace. He's the starter, full stop. Uh, but I would like to not lose both of our backups. And then we're also looking to lose a backup shooting guard and small forward. Because, uh, again, Chris Cole is a small forward. That's established. Who is our shooting guard? Didn't Adam st hold on? Did Adam start? Or we were starting small. Yeah, we were starting two small forwards. We were starting Cook and Cole both. So Cole is good to go, and Cook graduated. So let's talk to Adams. This might be. Man, a four-star small forward. I really don't want to lose that either. From Covington? Oh, that one would hurt. And we'll still have Bacon. We'll still have Adams. 
four star small forward. Maybe we go there. I don't want to go crazy on this. Like, I understand some of these guys are just going to go. Hmm. Let's see. Let's see what Alice Morris is looking like. Coach relationship. He doesn't like the coach relationship. So we can see if he will do that. And then let's see what Walton's problem is. He's he's not friendly. We'll let that go. Adams, some fine. What's Keith Smith's issue? He's good on both. So what's his problem? I'm not going to have him change position. I'm not going to have any of that. I guess we just have to go 50-50 with him. Um... I don't care about Morin leaving. Maybe we should try on Adams? What's he look like? Mm. Yeah, let's try. So we'll try on two out of the six. We'll we we'll just assume that the rest of these guys are going. We'll try on these two. We'll see what happens. I have no idea how this was going to work. I don't know when it tells you the response. I don't know what happens if you fail at it. I don't know. I mean, obviously, if it works fantastic the players come back but let's just see i don't know if we're going to get an email about it i have no idea you'll you'll get to learn it uh same time as i do no you meant well didn't do much for me don't feel any better okay appreciate it so have strong feelings but our talk did help All right, so maybe we changed morris's mind we'll see what happens okay so i'm hoping that what that means Again, just theoretically trying to, I don't want to try to reverse engineer anything here, but I'm hoping what that means is Morris has gone from 50% to something lower and that Adams is the same. And I assume that there's probably another message if it doesn't go well that it could backfire and the percentage increases. So um, I'll be cautiously optimistic about Morris. I'll assume that Lyons is gone and the rest of the guys are probably 50-50. But we'll see. No budget increase. End of the season, baby. All right, let's go. Now we're on to a new season. So I don't know. You know, we're 17 minutes into it. I don't know if that was interesting for anybody to see and walk through, but I didn't want to deprive anybody of it. I didn't want to do it off stream. Um, I wanted you, to, you guys to see how I work through the new feature. Um, you guys let me know how you work through those new features and how they're working out for you. Have you talked to anybody into staying? Have you pissed anybody off and ran them off? I, I don't know. I don't know how it works. It'd also be interesting once we get to the point where we've got some guys who, uh, this is the guy who lost to a 16 seed as a one seed. Yeah, your Agalia is identifying himself for the chat. So if you guys are in chat, Agalia just uh, clarified for everyone uh, and identified himself. It was a little bit odd way to phrase it, but this the guy who lost to a 16 seed is a one. Yeah, that's a Galia. So there he is. But anyway, uh, it'll be interesting when we get to the one and dones to see if we can talk about a going pro or whatever. And I would imagine, you know, it's probably going to be something similar. You're probably going to get a percentage. We'll see. I don't know. Uh, maybe I don't know. Chris Cole's like ranked 75. It'll probably be another year or two before we're pulling recruits uh, at that level. We have zero scholarships for this year? Really? We had no seniors? So that means we had no seniors and no transfers. So if we want anything, yeah, we're actually going to have to make some cuts here. Well, no, we're not. People are people are going to transfer out. We'll have, two prob we'll have at least two or three transfer out. I figure Lions is gone. I figure at least... It, probably two of the 50 50s so my guess is three transfers we'll see if i'm we'll see how close i am three's the over under that only leaves us 30k for recruiting mm -mm -mm, not crazy about that let's let's back that up to 90. All right, 40000 for recruiting works for me. 
You annoy, so you annoyed your team asking players to stay who wanted to go to the draft. So it makes the whole team mad when that happens? Interesting. So I guess you got to be delicate with it. I'm really interested to see who leaves. If if Morris stays, that'll be cool. Because that's what, you know, I was talking, well, I talked on the uh, the new features video, and I talked last week a little bit about it, how this is one of my favorite versions of the game. Because they've added a lot more information and a lot more ways for the user to control and have effect. Like, nobody's playing this to just watch a simulation. Everybody wants to affect it in some way, right? You want to feel that your actions and your input are doing something. So if me having that interaction with Morris keeps him on the team, that's going to be cool, right? <laughs> Thanks, Agalia. Take it easy, buddy. Don't work too hard. All right, let's see who actually transferred out. Are we going to have an email about it? All right, so... So Lions left and Adams left. <coughs> So, out of our 50-50, so Morris, we talked down from 50-50, we think. And so we had four guys left at 50-50, and only one of them left. Three of them came back. So that actually worked out pretty well for us. We got two transfers. Uh, we should have transfers available right away. And we need to take a look at our at our roster to figure out what are our positions of weakness. What do we need to focus on? Hey, Kid for Life, subscribe. Two months. Appreciate it, buddy. Yeah, this is a fantastic version of the game. I'm having a blast. We're looking a little bit. So Morin stayed. He was the one I cared the least about. But uh, we're we could use a backup here. Greenberg's all right. We're, we look all right at at the two. The three is obviously pretty solid. Walton stuck around. That's cool. Morris stuck around. We're good at the four. And Smith stuck around. We're really this is pretty good. And we added Marcel Bailey. So, one of these centers has got to go next year. <laughs> There's no way we keep these three centers. This is a deep team, guys. I would really like to improve our backup. I guess both of our guards, if I'm being honest. You know, I'd like to have a backup at the point, And I don't know. You know, I'd like to get a starter at the two. Or consider, you know, maybe we play Chris Cole there again. He's got a good outside shot. He's a good scorer. Wish you'd have developed a badge. Does Davenport have a badge? Yeah, he's got a couple. Paint Dominator and Cleanup. Keith Smith does not. Tremaine Grays does not. Davenport might be the only one. on. Oh, no. London's got a Defender badge. I do think we should... Uh, there's a lot of the color schemes that work pretty well to show these badges... For whatever reason, with Louisville's color scheme, like I feel like these should be showing up white. Um, just a personal opinion. All right. So we might be looking for guards in the transfers. We might be skipping the transfers and saving these scholarships for the freshmen, and that's actually my preference. But let's see if we've got a good scouting report on anybody that really makes us say no. And, yeah, we got two guards that we've got rated as an A. Both leaving Kansas. What do we look like? Oh, eight scoring bucket getter, Khalid Little. Four and a half star sophomore. 28 nationally. This guy might stick around till he's a senior. He's got an eight in scoring. He's a bucket getter. He doesn't have a fantastic shot. So this is always my dilemma, right? You've got a score, but if he doesn't have something up here, how's he getting the points? Or is he just jacking up shots? So it's a consideration. It's a thought. I'm thinking about it. I like what I see. Oh, Cherokee Ellsworth, a nine. Guys, if you're, oh my God, he's five star. He's a first team All American. Injured his ACL. He was ranked 10th. So he's got, but again, back to my point, it's a nine in scoring of sixes over here, bucket getter and defender. He's a defensive seven. You can't pass that up, right? I don't think you can pass that up. Let's 
take a look at Marks here. You know, as a backup, this is fantastic. Uh, I wish I could offer all three of these guys, honestly. And then if I, oh, man, I don't want to miss out on any freshmen, but whew, this is tough, guys. 32 minutes a game, average 20. How did Kansas lose this guy? Who tra who's, who plays 30, almost 33 minutes a game, averages almost 21, four assists, six rebounds? Who does that and then leaves? He's got to have a bad attitude, right? No, he's popular. He wants solid minutes, and he's got an average personality. What is happening? Is it the injury? How long is he out? 308 days. Oh, okay. So he might not be back 308 days. Jesus, what's that? He comes back for March? Okay, so that might be the reason. He might not be back until literally March. And Little's healthy, right? Yeah, it would be cool to jump in on a guy like that, but I don't know. That might just... It's not going to help throughout the entire season. It might help a late tournament run. But then at the same time, like, do you really want to wait until you hit the ACC or NCAA tournament to make a big change and add a guy like that into your lineup and try to figure that out? What's he... And see, he's not going to know the offenses. I don't know when they're injured, whether or not they get better in practice or not. Like, obviously, in real life, you wouldn't practice. But game-wise, I've never really paid that much attention to it. So we're, we're going to take the safe route. We'll offer – we'll see, scout. We're going to do everything. Scout, gauge interest, media kit, campaign, offer. We want you, Khalid. We're also going to do the same for Marks. Especially don't want him to go to U.K., if we get either one of these guys, cool. If we get both of them, we'll see if there's anybody we can cut. Uh, if we get neither of them, no harm, no foul. Let's see what happens. It's a shame Aylesworth was injured. <clears throat> that would have been a really cool pickup. First team All-American. Man, Kansas has got to be pissed. <laughs> like if he's already on your team, you, you might as you. You don't want to lose him, even if he is going to miss half the season, right? <clears throat> but yeah, incorporating him into a new system, I don't know. Alright, so we didn't get either of them. Lions went to Syracuse. Uh, I'm not going to take the time to look through here. And Ellsworth went to Arizona. Do we see the other guys? We'll see. Maybe they didn't transfer yet, or maybe I just forgot their name and they're already gone. We'll see. All right, so Little really has no interest in us. Marks, on the other hand, his overall dropped a little bit. But still, we're just looking for a backup. He's a sophomore with some really good potential. He was ranked 24th nationally. Yeah, we're going to go for him. Oh, we're his top choice at this point. So, yeah. Please and thank you. Blazer Taz wonders if injuries will drop ratings. Uh, I have my suspicions that they do just because of you know CBGM again. Uh, I go back to the first season, go back and look at Mike Gray. He was a top 25 player national. Uh, I'm sorry, he was actually, I think, number 26 nationally. So I thought I was just stealing a four-year player. And he was top 10 at Indy. So I'm like, I just, very first year, nailed a top 10 Indy camper, and I'm getting him for four years. It's going to be amazing. And he destroyed his knee like halfway through his freshman year. And, I mean, he was fine. He was like a second-team all-conference type of guy. And you can actually jump over to the MBGM now and see uh, he's about 30, 31 years old and uh, looking for a team. So, oh, we got three emails here. Marlon Marks will be coming in. So we filled in that point guard depth. So now we are really looking strong. We got to figure out what we want to do with the two. Um, 
let's skip the rest of these sessions. I'm not interested in anybody else. I'll take my one scholarship. See, we're not going to need a – what are we – we're not really going to need any position. I guess we're going to take our one scholarship – just swing for the fences, see if we can get the absolute best one and done. Like the, We don't need any one specific position. If I had my choice, I would take a difference maker one and done player at the two, right? Um, but if we grab that caliber of player, I don't care which position he's at. Preferably not center, but even if it's center, I'll take it. Those difference makers, like it, it's pretty serious. If you can take a team full of two- and three-year guys who are really good, and put them with one freshman who's excellent, you're cruising, baby. You're cruising. So this this year will be a good year. I, I swear to y'all, I will not lose to a 16 seed, or else I'll give you money. However much money you're paying me for this stream, I'll give it all back uh, for sure. But, um, yeah, I think we're going to have a better year. I think we'll make a good run. But next year, whoo, look out. As long as we don't lose anything crazy through the transfer portal, man. Actually, I don't know. This year, we've got good depth. I can't believe this team came back together, and we added marks. That was – it's going to be a really good year. Pretty excited about this one. Really excited to get into it, especially after the success that we had last year. Now we come back, another year of experience, another year of practice, another year of training. These guys, especially these guys who are starters – are going to move from like the 60s and 70s on our offense up into the hundreds. We're going to be able to run that 80% set, 85% set maybe. Um, and that's one thing I thought about, was that too high? And maybe it was. You know, maybe I shouldn't go over 75 or 80, I don't know. I always feel better about it, though. If they're really good at the offense, like why not run it and just see what they can do? So maybe we'll probably drop that back to 75 or 80 and maybe just like tinker with it a little bit throughout the season and see where we get the better results, especially now that the players are going to know it even better. But, um, you know, you don't want to, you don't want to restrict them too much. You don't want them running down, like running down on a fast break. I don't know how much that affects like fast breaks and that sort of thing. Are they going to just stop on a fast break and try to run the offense because you have that set too high? I don't think that's the case, but, uh, maybe 85 was too high. Maybe that's what did us in. But again, we lost by 10. So, uh, I couldn't bring myself to look at the box score. I don't want to know what it was. It sucked. I'm still hurt by it. You can tell I'm still scarred by it because I can't stop talking about it. So, all right, kid. He's holding me to it. Your money back if I lose to another 16 seed tonight. If it's any other day, I get to keep all this. Uh, I'm raking it in over here, I promise you. <clears throat> all right, on to summer trial. Let's check the inbox here. A lot of players transferring, skip the summer. Take a look there. Our recruit class came in at 23rd. Delete everything. I don't think we had a big recruiting class. I think it was, was it just the center and the small forward? It wasn't a lot, I promise that. All right, let's check this out. We're going to Indy. I don't even know if we go... Yeah. Well, we got the money and only one scholarship. I... Did we go to Memphis or not? Let's go to Memphis. And I just did that just budget-wise. We'll still be above 25000 and it won't cost me that much to bring in one player. You know, we should be able to identify what player we want to go after and get him, if not an early signee, uh, get who we want in the first or second week of in-homes. We're not going to have to do four weeks of in-homes. So even if we're down to like $6,000 in budget, we can get through two weeks of in-homes and get one player signed, no problem. Not going to worry about it. We'll do both camps. Here we go, recruiting June 26th, one of our favorite days of the year. There's the pro draft. I don't think we, we had one player leave. Maybe. Mm. If he did, he didn't get drafted. All right, delete all emails. Let's start fresh here. And let's jump into recruiting. So again, nothing new here. 
shooting guard only, full recruit list. Started off with the ones, all regions, and we're swinging for the fences. I don't even know that I, well, yeah, I'm still going to go 10 deep just because I want to see if there's any good talent uh, that sneaks up on us. I'm not going to three stars, though, I'll tell you that much. I'm sticking with fours and fives, baby. Fours and fives. Matt Marshall, feeling you. Uh, not going to three stars. <laughs> this is going to be a short recruiting list. Oh, this is real short. We do not have interest out of small forwards. They're only only regional ones, right? Yeah, at least we got some decent depth in the region. And again, I'm not going for I'm not going for the three star guys, even if they are like, say top say a three star guy's top five at Memphis. What's that mean? Like, are you beating out either of the small forwards on our roster? No. So like, where do you slot in? It's just not happening. We're going for difference makers. Probably not going to have a lot of interest here at Power Forward either. No. We're going to have a short, short list, guys. All right, so that's all the four and five stars that actually had interest in us. Let's do this. Can we just look at five star guys at all positions? but we only want to look in the southeast. All right, so they're all cool on us, and we have... So every five-star player in the southeast has some level of interest in us, and we've got them on all of our lists, right? So full recruit list is that, and then if we go to call and watch list, it's still going to be the same, right? Same exact thing. So honestly, honestly, this is probably our list for this year. But we'll go to all regions show all levels and we'll start working through them this is our list uh, let's bring them in for the visits and we're off <laughs> here we go let's see and still yeah just the one scholarship to give we got twenty five thousand dollars to bring in one guy and we got we got a little bit of interest right away nothing crazy Conley looks a little bit slow on us uh, let's get through the two camps I don't know I, I do the camps before I do anything else because theoretically I would like to have the information from the camps but I'm not looking at it so it really doesn't matter right now because I uh, recently I've just been burning through until all the camps are done and then I go through and shorten the list but this year I don't even know that that's really going to be necessary two out of three again not too shabby get through the camps get through the dead period you ever reach for guys that don't have interest to start with they're within GPA yeah absolutely especially if they're within region uh, which is exactly why I just went and looked. So, um, <clears throat> kid for life, that's a fantastic question. That's the reason that I sorted that list and looked at guys within my region who were five-star players. If there was any five-star player within the southeast region who whose GPA fell within my range, I would have added them to the list and made a play for it. If my prestige was at, like probably 75, 80 or higher, then I would have just done it nationwide and gone after five stars. Uh, I, I, I limited it to my region because of where my prestige is right now. I'm a 65. So I don't think that I can necessarily go into somebody else's backyard and pull a player out right now. But if, if I'm at 90, 95 prestige, absolutely. I would have just pulled up the five-star list, gone right through, and taken whoever I wanted that I thought would qualify. So, great question. Thanks for allowing me to uh, expand on that a little bit. All right, let's keep it going. I mean, we, can, we only got 22 players on the list. We ought to be able to host every one of them. We're hot. Was that a power forward? Yeah, there's a power forward that's really into us. Okay. I see you. Here, the email's coming hot and heavy. <clears throat> we're still in July, and we're 
even halfway through our list. We're going to have a pretty good feel for where we're at. Quiet period. We can still host. Yeah, so by the time we get through these two camps, we'll have already had every single person visit. So we can just go through and clear this list of anybody that doesn't belong on it. And see what we're left with. Very targeted recruiting this year, but helps us get into the games faster. Another small forward that's pretty. Why do we have three stars? I didn't think I added any three stars onto this list. Oh, they got reevaluated. All right, well, it could always change again. And let's just grab the last one, right? Still got 12,000. All it's going to be from here on out is calls and then right up until we get to the live recruiting. So let's see what we got. <clears throat> we will do this by position. Jason Lay, top 25 at Indy. You get to stay. Top five at Memphis. And nothing about a national camp, so he probably went to the East Coast Jam. Decent at Indy. He's from Washington, so I don't have that camp info. So probably not a probably not a real target, but didn't stand out at Indy. Tremendous work ethic. Decent at Memphis. Sorry, this is not a difference maker. Last year, I probably would have kept this guy. If I didn't get that transfer, I probably would have kept this guy. But in the situation that I'm in, I don't need a player like this. I already have that. MVP at Memphis. Okay, yep, you get to stick around for sure. Decent at Memphis. I don't need that. Decent. All right. Moving on. Matt Marshall. Oof. Top five at Indy. We are not anywhere in his top ten right now. So we'll keep on calling him. But um, probably a no-go. Didn't stand out at Indy. He's from Kansas, so we don't have the local information. So you're just off the list. Top 25 at Indy. Didn't go to the Southeast camp, it looks like. We're not that high on his list just yet. Decent. Nothing at Southeast. Kind of high on the list. Not a difference maker, but I'm not going to kick him off the list in another decent. All right, we don't have any difference makers yet. Not, at least not anything that we've got a realistic shot at. Well, we don't probably don't have a shot at him anyway, but he was top, top top five at Indy, so wouldn't mind getting there. And this is a guy. Sometimes you get these guys who like they just warm up to school slower than others, so nobody's hot on him yet. So I'm not going to take it too personally. Wardell didn't stand out at Indy or Memphis. No. Uh, didn't stand out at Indy or Memphis. It's not going great so far, guys. Didn't stand out at Indy or Memphis. What is going on with you small forwards? We have nothing at the small forward. MVP at Indy. I think we're hot on him. So he gets to stay on the list. <laughs> Top 25. Okay. Top 25. Decent at Indy. Top 10 at Memphis. And we're high on the list. So maybe, maybe this is a realistic target. You know, I don't know that it's a position of need, but we did just have to talk Alice Morris into coming back for a second year. It's possible he tries to leave again, so maybe maybe there's a reason Vincent's sticking around. <clears throat> Top 25 at Indy, so we got a decent chance at him. Top 25, and maybe a chance at him. Okay, so our list is cleaned up. It's gone from 22 to 15. You can see who we've still got here. Um, hmm. And we're on August 28th. Only got a week to make this decision. Interesting stuff. Hmm. Who's the MVP at Memphis? Uh, at Indy? 
Maybe we just shoot for the moon. No, let's not shoot for the moon. Let's shoot for, like I said before, if I had, if we had a clear target, and maybe LB Vincent should be that target, and I'm doing something wrong here. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know, kid. <clears throat> uh, so maybe LB Vincent is the clear target here. Maybe that's what I should do, but I'm not going to do it. Uh, I told you all beforehand that I wanted to absolutely bring in a difference maker, and I would prefer it be at the two position. Matt Marshall's top top five at Indy. The MVP isn't here, right? I think the MVP, I feel like it was the power forward. But anyway, we're going to go for Matt Marshall. He's the number one recruit in the country. Why not? Right? It's not going to kill us. If we don't land him, odds are Vincent's still available because I, I feel like he's a, he got re-rated to a three, but he's still at the best a four-star. Uh, all right, yeah, we offered. Let's go ahead and watch film. I don't think that helps, but I'd rather do it. And then we can go ahead. Is MVP over here? Yeah, Conley's the MVP. Uh, I mean, we'll, we'll talk to him. And then Vincent. We definitely want to talk to him. All right, got all his info unlocked. Watch some film. Okay, let's see what happens. See if anybody commits early. Changes our plan. <clears throat> so yeah, Vincent's a three-star right now, so he'll probably stick around. All right, <laughs> well... Bad news for us. Our scholarship is available. So Marshall went somewhere else. It wasn't here. Uh, let's just do the reveal on that. He's going to Kentucky. Oh, God bless. They just lose to a 16 seed. Top target goes to Kentucky. Like, come on, get off my back. The hits keep coming. They're not being very friendly to me right now. All right, with... Conley. He didn't commit early, so we could visit him, but we're not even in the top 10. We're nowhere close. Let's go back and take a look at what happened with the rest of those shooting guards. Nobody else did anything. All right, so top 25, that's all that we got, right? He was decent. He was decent. So top 25 is the best we could do. And there's not really any offers out here other than Miami. But I think we're only hot. Or warm on him. Yeah. So we're only warm. We would have to leapfrog Miami. But we could do it. There's no reason that we can't. Let's get Venner unlocked. Right now we are not on his list. Let's see if we can change that. Probably not. This is probably a bad decision. I'm probably uh, chasing lost money here. Should probably just take Vincent, appreciate having another big man, and uh, waiting to see how many of my big men transfer out. Because he would be helpful on next year's team. But Venner would be cool. So let's try it once, and then we go to Vincent. Or we just don't sign anybody here, and we save the scholarship for next year. Those are our two options right now. Let's cross our fingers, though. We got the offer out. Yes. We got to get the visit out. That would help. Uh, we're going to talk about prestige, obviously. Maybe we should Oh, We'll see. Uh, let's do it. Cross our fingers. Hey, baby! Jump in and stolen from the Hurricanes. Mick Everett Venner. We got one scholarship. I told you. Swing for those fences. Call your shot, babe. Top 25 at Indy. Didn't go to the regional. Could be a multi-year player. These are these five-star top 25 guys. We got to start pulling in, and we got one. So, I told you all next year was going to get serious. That makes me think it's going to get even more serious. Fantastic recruit. I thought I was chasing bad money. I was wrong, as I tend to be. All right, cool. Let's go to scheduling. I almost never change this unless there's like a cool storyline reason to change it yeah kid it was it was a nice pull for sure uh if there was some kind of storyline to change this i would but there really isn't it's fairly weak out of conference but once we get into the ac well first of all 
we got to go through Kentucky, and then we got North Carolina, Clemson, Miami is in the top 25, Duke in the top 25. So we're going to have plenty of marquee games. We're not worried about strength of schedule. I'm not changing this at all. I'm going to take a look at the roster real quick. I almost never want to redshirt anybody, but I just want to make sure. We actually could redshirt more if we wanted. Huh. Not off the table. Uh, what does Greenberg's rating go back down? Yeah, his rating went down. Walton's did as well. So a couple of these guys got re-rated down. A couple of Chris Cole moved up. So he's not great defensively, though. <laughs> Our centers, gosh. What a log jam at the center position. I mean, we redshirt there, too. Right, like redshirt Bailey, see if we can keep him. Start Davenport, let Smith be the backup. He wants solid minutes. That's We're going to lose him. Let's actually redshirt Moore and Bailey. And then I think at the two, let's see, we got these three guys. Scoring is all kind of garbage, but, you know, Walton's not great either. Some maybe we just play Bacon. He's going to be familiar with the offense at the very least. Yeah, he's 100 in the motion. All right, so Bacon will be our starter there. And then what we'll we'll actually just let everybody play true positions this year. London backed up by Marks. Bacon backed up by Greenberg, Cole backed up by Walton, Grays by Morris, and then Davenport and Smith. That's going to be our depth. And he's from Miami. You just put all three star prestige teams on your schedule. I'm not worried about the schedule. Like, no, we're going to make the tournament, especially on a stream. Like, I try to get through this stuff because I, I like to get you guys at least one full year per stream. Like, you know, in the past, I've got, oh, well, last week, I got two, uh, two full seasons in. In the there's been other times where I haven't been able to get a full season in for any variety of reasons. So I like the starting lineup that the game's already recommending to me. And what we're going to... Well, let's see. Do they have this set up reasonably? No. wish I could just... Give the starters all minutes. Actually, let's suggest a matrix. And just go from here. This is, this is close to what I would want to do. All right, so, and we're just going to, we're going to mirror this on both sides. Point guard, point guard, that's fine. Shooting guard, boom, 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 boom. Small forward. Power forward. And center. He's cleared. Need him there. Need him there. All right, so 30 minutes for the starters, 10 minutes for the backups. And it's pretty much just going to be shift changes right here in the middle. And I'm fine with this. Yeah, I think this is going to be good, actually. Um, and the thing, like, I, honestly, honestly, what I would do probably is drop this down so that this was like 26 and 14 and a little bit more of an even mesh but I don't want to lose any of my starters because they don't get the minutes that they want you know if you've got a if you've got a starter uh who's expecting starting minutes they could get kind of pissy about it and I just don't want to lose any of them I guess I could check through and see if any of them are he's not concerned about playing time so maybe I can do it at point guard not concerned oh okay interesting Cole wants solid minutes, so I get a little bit worried there, but he's not asking for starter. Nobody's asking for starters minutes. Is Davenport? Oh, he's not even concerned. Who cares about minutes? Nobody? Solid. Solid. Wait a second. This is interesting. Okay, so this is making me think, and I'm sorry. This is just sort of off the cuff. I wasn't expecting this. Three and two. 
Let's do this. Let's have some fun. We're going to mix it up a little bit, all right? Can't you just click the blue arrow instead of the X each time? Uh, probably I don't know what you're talking about. You're probably not wrong. Um, but I'm not sure. Let's do this. Well, we're going to jack this up because I think we've got – there's not a huge difference between our starters and backups. Not Not huge. We're going to get all kinds of um, – we're going to get all kinds of mid-90s Kentucky. I'm going to go in and jack up my full court. We're going to press the ball and press the pace. So now we've just got full. You go six minutes as hard as you can, you get out of the game. We're going to go back and forth that way uh, through both periods. And then we'll swap them out here. We'll leave the starters in here. We're going to jack up the minutes. Maybe everybody transfers out on me. Maybe I completely ruin this save for a year or two. I don't know. Um, oh, yeah, yeah, You can click the blue arrow and just goes to the next player. Yeah, you can. Uh, I do it both ways. It just depends on where my brain's at at any given second. We're going full on mid-90s Kentucky. This is saved. Let's go to the office. Let's jack up this full court percentage. Uh, let's, yeah, let's, woo, woo. how big do we want to get? Like, how, how big are our big boy pants? Let's keep it right there, I guess. We do need to go in and adjust the practice plan for sure. So let's take this time away. We're not going to play any, uh, we need to play some zone. Uh, but we got a lot of guys who have been here who have started who know how to play man-to-man, -man. obviously. Let's drop it down to 15. Let's jump this up to 20. We're going to go at it. Full court, baby. Full court defense. Let's go. Let's do a change. Hey, this is something new for the stream. We've never done it before. Let's go. we got a team full of guys who are about the same talent. Nobody really cares about playing time. Like, <laughs> let's get this. Is, I don't even know if this is 90s Kentucky. There's, it's a little bit of 90s Arkansas, too. A little bit of Nolan Richardson, right? And let's try it. We got our depth set. We got our recruiting done. We got our practice plan. We need our strategy. Let's make sure this is looking right. I think that it's probably not going to be too far off. We want to run motion on offense. On defense, we're going 90 and 10. Yeah, I'm still fine with that. Still fine with that mix-up. Where are we at on the 1-3-1? One, one? We're not great at it. Let's, let's back this off. Let's go 95 and 5. Let's go 95 and 5. 100% full court man. I don't want to do the, the cheesy glitch press. One of these presses is a cheesy glitch press. I don't want to do it. Or at least it used to be. I don't know if it still is. But I know the full court man to man should be interesting. This is thematic. Uh, I'm not trying to I'm not trying to game anything or, like I said, reverse engineer anything. I don't have fun playing games that way. But I think this is going to be a cool concept. And I just want to see how it works out. So this is going to be a new experience for me. And I hope you guys, <laughs> I hope it's a cool experience for you guys too. I guess it'll probably come down to the reactions and how the games actually work out. But uh, let's experiment together, right? Yeah, well, nobody's coming on stream just to watch me win the same old boring way, right? Let's do it. This is going to be cool. I'm excited now. Yeah, Whammy Bar says 40 minutes of hell. That's absolutely right. That's Arizona, uh, Arizona, Arkansas Razorbacks, Nolan Richardson, 40 minutes of hell. Absolutely, that's what we're going for. And you can see these guys, now, that will be one big difference is our starters, for the most part, are completely maxed out on this offense. And our backups are not, like Marks, Greenberg, like those guys are going to struggle when they come in. So we definitely do want to back this off at 85. We're going to drop it down 70 or 75. Uh, I'm actually, I'm going to go 70 now and maybe we up it to 75 toward the end of the season. That's, that's my plan. If I forget to up that later in the season, somebody in chat, please remind me. We're going to go 70 and 75 and we're going to see how this works out. I'm excited. I think I've said that like five times. All right. Practice begins. 
let's go. Y- y'all better run. Get on your treadmills, baby. We got to do the drill. Everybody's heard anybody that's been around sports. Here's the nightmare scenario where these high school players go off to college in the first practice. They just run them until the first two or three guys puke, right? That's what we're doing. Get on the treadmill, run around. We'll put a garbage can in each corner. Somebody's getting sick. We're running. Morning fish. I don't care if these. Uh, I'm not worried about this. Fishback seems like a jerk. Let's deal with that. I like to yell at him every now and then just because I do put the discipline like one notch up. Fishback. Uh, knock it off. All right, fair enough. When it when it's the players that matter, sometimes I take it a little bit slower, but like these walk-ons that are never going to play, I just don't care. I'll kick them off the team if they don't back down. I'm really interested to see like what the I'm interested to see everything. What do the scores look like? What do our minutes look like? We got our red shirts to Oh shoot. Playing this way, I'd almost like to unred shirt. I'd almost like those players back to add the depth. But at the same time, you know, we do have good depth. And if we have any kind of injury issues or whatever, we can always back off of this style, right? Like we can, we can always walk it back. We can always press less. And what do we lose? Like some of the practice time that we would have been working on man defense. We're not losing much. So should be an interesting new little wrinkle with hopefully not a lot of risk but yeah you never know maybe these guys start fouling out and we lose some games pretty badly we're gonna have to adjust as we go maybe it works out really well maybe i up maybe i take it up to the hundred you know all the way up take it that last notch we'll see First game against Niagara. Now, I got to tell you, I think it's going to be a bad day for Niagara. Just looking at the rankings, it looks like Duke is the top-ranked team in the ACC, and we would be second as of right now. But let's see, we got the Purple Eagles coming in. The Niagara Purple Eagles into the Yum Center, into onto Denny Crum Court, walking into 40 minutes of hell for the first time. Let's see what this looks like. I'm nervous. I'm, for the first time in a while, I'm a little nervous. Let's see what this looks like. 90 to 69. Okay. Davenport, Cole, London with 10 assists. So Davenport, right out of the gate, is you know, supporting what I said earlier in the stream. I probably should have started him last year as a freshman. He certainly didn't disappoint at all. Uh, Cole had a game like we expected. And uh, you know, London nearly had a double double. It was like. Eight or nine points and ten assists, so that looked good. I do want to. I am going to bounce over. I don't, I'm not going to do this too often. I'll do it three or four times early, uh, but I just want to go back and check the box score and see what the minutes looked like with that press. So pretty much just how we set it up, and the fouls don't seem to be a huge problem. Although that's against bad competition. So I wonder if the competition gets tougher, will that make the fouls worse? It's possible. So we'll have to consider that as we move forward. It's just I'm just giving you stream of consciousness right now as I think it, I say it. Looks like we whooped them in the first half, and then the second half was a little closer. All right, we'll see if that continues. We'll see if that's a trend. And we're going to find out fast because now we got Pacific again at home. So should be another easy win. But let's see, like let's kind of – Let's kind of gauge these results against the results that we were getting last year. Ooh, much too close for liking. Let's see if there's anything weird in this box score. Is there foul trouble or are there people not playing enough minutes? Uh, not really. Not really, just a closer game. 7 to 16 from 3. Only 6 steals. We're playing that much pressure and we only got 6 steals? Only forced 15 turnovers? Okay. 
not having a huge effect yet. Let's take a look, though, just real quick at how well we know that press uh, strategy. All right, so the full court man-to-man, -man, we're still learning. This should go up as the season goes on. Right, because the practice plan, how, how hard are we going at it? 20% of our practice plan is this full court man-to-man. -man. We'll figure this out as the season goes. This should get more effective. It should improve for sure. Man, hold on. I need to look at this again. Almost every, let's see, Bacon, Greenberg, Walton Cole, Grayson Morris, everybody playing knows the man-to-man -man fairly well, with the exception of Greenberg. So, I'm going to, we're going to double down. Let's just see what happens. Let's drop this to five for right now. We'll, we'll switch it back for next season. Let's give this another 10% of our practice time. I'll tell you what, let's give it five more. We're giving that 35% of our practice time now. We're going to figure out this press. And if it's going to work, it's going to work. And it'll get better as the season goes on for sure. So we might not know how well this works until early February. But we're going to keep an eye on it. Knowing that the percentages are way low, I don't expect to see huge effects early. Now, if it's a huge detriment... That's one thing. But hopefully it's not. Because, I mean, what's the worst that happens? You go full court man-to-man, -man, you blow it, and I mean, maybe giving up layups. We'll have to keep an eye on transition points. If we're getting blown out in transition, uh, especially once we get into conference, if we're getting blown out in transition, we're going to have to back off of that. But we'll see. This is an ex It's just an experiment. The Northwestern Wildcats, 1-1, one one, once again coming into the KFC Yum Center. Right, so, first time that we're playing this style against a Power 5 opponent, although they look kind of crap in net. 1-1 one one on the season, who knows what the competition was. Let's see. Hey, it's the Cardinals and the Wildcats. You can never be disappointed with the Cardinals and the Wildcats. Not the right Wildcats, but still the Wildcats. Let's see what happens. 78-54. Looks good. Looks good. Tremaine Gray's with a double-double. Jamie Davenport showing up again. All right, feeling good about that. Let's keep working at it. Let's keep improving, keep practicing. We're moving forward. Now, I do wonder if I should back off of this style of play when we play Kentucky. We'll see how highly they're ranked when we actually get to that game. If they're still really highly ranked, we're going to back off just a little bit. Because uh, I want to compete in that game. I want to beat them. And, and, you know, if our practice percentage and familiarity with the defense was higher, I would totally run it against them and just roll the dice and see what happened. But uh, given how much we still need to practice and improve on that, I don't think it gives us any advantage against a top team yet. I think it will by the end of the season. 78-60, okay. Jamie Davenport just being consistent. It's what he does. 20 and, 20 and 6, 20 and 8. He looked good. Feeling good about Jamie Davenport. Really like that switch. Really glad that um, uh, Keith Smith, really glad that Smith was okay not getting the starters minutes. It's a big benefit. There's the Dons. Look, the AI is going to bring back the Dons. Hey, somebody's got to. Somebody's got to re, uh, rebuild San Francisco. What are y'all doing out there? I can only I can only rebuild one team at a time. Somebody's got to jump on the Dons. Get a YouTube going. Download some OBS. Y'all can stream. It's a good time. It's the same exact thing that you would be doing anyway. You're just going to sit here and play this game, but now you just get to stare at a camera and talk to people while you do it. It's exciting. I'd be doing this either way. Jacksonville. What, I don't even know who Jack. What is Jacksonville? I don't know what this mascot is. 
but they're coming to play Louisville. We're undefeated. We're not having it. We're sending you out of here, and we're going to press your ass. We are pressing you. You better, you better have a ball handler. You better know how to break a press because we're coming. The cards against Jacksonville, 90-69. to 69. Second time this year we've seen that score. All right. Nobody playing crazy, but uh, this team is, like I said earlier, there's no huge difference between the starters and the backups. There's also no huge difference between the starters themselves. I get, like, if I had to pick my best player, I'd say it was probably Cole. But all of these guys, like, you're not seeing anyone stand out because all of them are so similar. They're talent. Similar talent? I can't think of the right way to phrase that off the top of my head. Similar talent levels. Uh, whatever. They're pretty good. Just got a journeyman say video up on YouTube, so maybe you can share and end up there. Hey, absolutely, man. I'm telling you, bring back the Dons, bring back Georgetown, bring back IU, bring back... Somebody's got to bring back UCLA. I mean, UCLA's sort of like flirting with it every five or ten years, but UCLA isn't UCLA anymore. Somebody's got to fix that. Long Island coming into the um. Leaving the um disappointed. 90 to 58. So we're putting it on them. These are consistent 20 to 30 point wins. I feel really good about it. We only had really, was it just the one close game against Pacific, I think? It was like eight points or so. Bring back Ooey Pooey. When was Ooey Pooey good? Well, they like made the tournament. Well, Mississippi Valley, Jerry Rice University. IUPUI made the tournament like a few years. Did they ever have like a big time coach or something that kind of walked through there? All right, one more game to practice and work on this, and then we've got to get serious against Kentucky, and we've got to decide on what our tactic is going to be. So the Loyola Greyhounds. Hey, you're going to need a Greyhound to keep up with this press, baby. Because we're coming. We're firing on all, cinder, all cylinders. And you can't keep up with us. Uh, your motor coach isn't going to keep up with us. Especially the one that Loyola's coming in. You're not keeping up with the cards. We're running you into the ground. Let's go. 87-45, to 45, Davenport, Greenberg with the big game off the bench. 18 points from Greenberg. Love to see that. So, see, I mean, you give these guys, what's he getting, six? Oh, hold on. He's getting 14 minutes. 14 minutes, and he put up that stat line. Heck of a game. Now, maybe, excuse me, maybe Bacon fouled out or had foul trouble, whatever. Uh, let's go take a look. See how far along this is. If this is into the 40s, I'll consider it. If it's into the 50s, I'll stick with it for sure. Uh, it's abysmal. It's not into the 40s yet. <clears throat> All right, so I think we back it down on the road against Kentucky. It's kind of unfortunate. We'll still play it more often than we don't, but we'll back it up a little. B Love found somebody running a Michigan save. That's probably Gary. <laughs> Congratulations, you found Gary's stream, <laughs> right? Whammy's looking for ways to record. Any other YouTubers play the game? Uh, well, I mean, I know Gary streams, but he, I know for sure, uh, since he's the de the developer, he doesn't use uh, any of the mods or anything. He just plays the base game. Uh, and I think that's probably a safe call, legally speaking. Um, I know a lot of people that that do like diary saves on the Wolverine Studios forums. 
Uh, otherwise, as far as just like streaming seasons or anything, if you want to find some other ones, I haven't seen it. Uh, but you can always check out the Wolverine Studios forum. If somebody's streaming, they'll probably be posting it over there. Or or follow the Wolverine Studios Twitter. I think they're pretty open. Like if you're streaming their content, they'll uh, like retweet you or whatever. So if somebody's doing it, you could find it over there. But you know, I, I'm I have no association with Wolverine Studios whatsoever. I strictly stream for GM Games and Chris, uh, and so. Uh, I, I don't have that other information. I know where to send you to look for it, but I, I don't have it. Hey, everybody's new to YouTube at some point. Like, I actually started... I, when I started streaming, I was actually not even streaming this game. It was something completely different. And then... Like, I just found myself doing this, and, like, honestly, I just wanted to do it to, like, promote it and put content out and try to grow the community so we could grow the multiplayer league, and now the multiplayer league's fantastic. I think we got, like, 110, 120 human-run teams, and so that's doing great. Uh, so I really don't have any need to stream, and that's why I haven't in a long time, at least consistently, uh, but it's just... It's fun, and this year's version of the game is entertaining, and if I'm doing it anyway, like, why not do it on stream? So here we go into Kentucky. Uh, oh, but let me finish my thought on that. Like, if you're new to streaming, like, just do it. Just do it and check it out and and go back and look at what you're doing and, and kind of, like, how it comes across. And I did that a few times, and, you know, you, you'll kind of figure out, like, where your active voice is, you know. Because there were absolutely times where I would be streaming, <clears throat> and it would be kind of like, Okay, so now I'm going to stream over here, and I'm going to post this right up here. And this is going to be pretty cool. Check this out. Um, yeah, so I'm going to press this button, and I think this is going to be a good idea. Go back and watch that stuff. <laughs> like, I watched it. I heard myself. You figure it out or you don't. Um, but, hey. Grow the community, grow the content, put stuff out there, get better at it, have fun with it. If you enjoy it, do it. If you don't enjoy it, like, life's short, go enjoy something. Louisville and Kentucky, the cards and the cats. We're headed into Lexington, Kentucky, Rupp Arena, playing seven on five. It's the only way you play in Rupp Arena is seven on five. We're going seven on five. We're undefeated. We've got a record to uphold. We're backing off of the press. We're going to see what's happening. But it's the cards and the cats, baby. It's the biggest day in the bluegrass. Not a TV in the entire state not tuned into this game right now. Let's see what happens. Fingers crossed. Come on, baby. Let's get this win. Three, two, one, go. Die! Let's do it. 80 to 72. That's my boys. Woo! In Rupp Arena. Go home sad, cat fans. Go home sad. Go home mad. Sit out on your porch in the cold. <laughs> Y'all might not get that reference, but... Whew, all through my childhood, there were people just call in to talk shows talking about how the cat's lost and they're going to sit out in the cold on their porch all night. Go home, cats. You were already home, but, you know, go home further. We own Rupp Arena this year, baby. We own Lexington. We're taking it over. Hey, last year in last stream around December, we lost a game, and I said, hey, this team's not really for real. This team might be for real. <laughs> it might be for real. We're going to get it going. Whew. Hey, uh, um, I don't know what Chris's official answer would be, and I don't know if he's in the chat to respond to that or not, but as far as me personally, if you all are posting links about this game or something that's going to grow this community, that's what this stream is for. That's what these channels are for. Feel free. If it's about something else, I'd rather you all not post it, please. Um, 
And I mean, I'm sure, you know, Chris would prefer it be associated with GM games and that's great. I myself just want to grow this community and have better ideas, more participation, all that sort of stuff. So if it's about this game and this community, you know, that's what we're here for. Cats are still crying. <laughs> hey, we got two Wildcats this year. We got Northwestern and we got Kentucky. They're all crying. They're all crying. We're going to see who we play next. Because I do want to I do want to bump this full court percentage back up. I feel like the more that you play it, uh, the more that they learn it. And I want to have it really set up and humming by the time we get to the postseason. Might pull a UVA. Hey, you never know. Hey, we'll see what we're doing. We're playing Southern Utah, so we're definitely going to come over here and put the pressure back on. Uh, uh, uh. Feel the pressure. We're coming for you. But are we on the road? Or is this a tournament game? <clears throat> I'll have to look. No, we're at home. KFC Yum Center. The Southern Utah Thunderbirds, 1-7. Should be a beating. The Pity Kitties. Oh, I love that. The Pity Kitties. Yes. Fantastic. Oh, Southern Utah. They kind of kept it. Davenport had a man's game. 19 and 14, baby. Jamie Davenport. Man, did I screw up leaving him on the bench last year. Because you can see, like, last year, you could go through the games. Smith would pop up every now and then. Davenport kept popping up coming off the bench and I think he was only playing eight to ten minutes and he kept showing up and now this year we put him in as a starter and he's just consistent so you know I thought at the end of last year maybe I screwed up I talked about it a little bit at the beginning of this stream and now the further we get into it the more obvious it is I definitely made a huge mistake not starting Jamie Davenport over Keith Smith but we all make mistakes right Pity kitties. I can't wait to post that when they lose in the NCAA tournament this year. That's a fantastic, uh, that's a fantastic little nickname for them. Also, losers. I like that one. All right, number twenty-two. How? Wait a second. We're nine and zero. We won at Kentucky, who was like they were higher ranked than us. How are we only number 22 in the country right now? What are the rest of these teams doing? How are we only 22? You know what? I'm not even I'm not even going to complain. I'm not gonna, I'm going to let it go. I want to see what this press does once we get into conference and how we learn it and see if we can please if we can please get to like 50% on the press by tournament time. It's going to be exciting. If we don't get to at least 50% by tournament time, I'm backing off of it. All right, so the Panthers. This looks like a solid team. This is a tournament team. If we were going to pit, I'd be backing off that press right now. But at home, we're going to run it. We're going to see if we can handle it against Pitt. And this is going to be, you know, another early indicator of how this is working. I'm nervous. I want to back off of it a little bit, honestly. We're going to push it, though, because we want it for the end of the season. So we can sacrifice now for later. Don't have to. 77-68, Tremaine Graves with 13 rebounds. I saw Jamie Davenport popping back up. Didn't see the stat line, but he's still in there. That's what you called Memphis after beating him as Tennessee. My, well, you know what? I, I have a favorite, a favorite memory of Louisville and Memphis but I don't want to be on stream bad-mouthing anybody or saying anything negative about any kind of athlete, and so I'm just not going to do it. But there are moments, <laughs> you know. Sometimes somebody smarts off. Oh, we lost at North Carolina. I wasn't even paying attention. I guess the coach should pay attention to the stream, huh? But North Carolina is ranked number five, and we were on the road. So press or no press, not shocked there. Let's take our lumps, move on, grow as a team. Uh, somebody, sometimes people like to show off and, you know, do push-ups 
on your home court when they're winning a game and mouth off and say the wrong thing and act like a jerk. And sometimes they get their comeuppance in a very public way. Uh, and I can't say that I don't enjoy that. So without mentioning any names, if you know your Memphis history, especially with Louisville, you know where I'm coming from. Time for a streamer beverage. We'll grab two so we don't have to stand up again during the stream. So we're only into January. Like We're an hour 25 in. This has probably got another 25, 30 minutes left, I would imagine. And that's probably only going through one season tonight. I don't think I can make two seasons again. That would be a little bit rough. We're getting Clemson, though, so this is going to be another home game against another good team. So another chance to see how this strategy is working or is it not working. It's actually going to be a really good test. Hey! Oh, all right, Gray's got injured. Smith and Davenport had big games. Gray's got injured. Let's see what that's all about. Please be something insignificant. Oh, sprained finger. Perfect. Don't care. Let's delete these emails. Jump back over here and move along. We'll let him play at 90%. That's cool. I should probably flip-flop him uh, out for Morris, especially with us running this high tempo, but let's push it, right? Especially at home against a 5-8 Boston College team, let's push it. If the injury made him more likely to get, like, worse injured, I would definitely flip it. But I don't think that that's the case. I've never really experienced that. <clears throat> the Eagles and the Cardinals. Hey, 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 32. And it's still, like, Davenport is there every game. And I haven't seen Cole a lot this year. Am I missing something? Cole's starting for us, right? What am I missing? Davenport's just crushing it. All right, let's keep pushing. This is working so far. Of course, we've been at home a lot, and eventually we're going to have to go on the road, and so the, the results could be very different on the road. In fact, in the ACC, are we, are we right now undefeated at home and winless on the road? I mean, it's 3-1, and one, but... I think that's the case. We need to figure out if we can win on the road with this. Miami number five, North Carolina number three, and we're number 23. Duke is sitting at three and two in conference, and they're still number four? What are we doing? All right, well, I promise we'll have a game eventually. It's not going to be today. But we'll get there for sure. Here we go. Now we're on. The, now okay. Now we're on the road against Clemson. Now we're on the road against Clemson. Let's see where we're at. If we're still in the 30s on this thing, I'm backing off of it for sure. Nah, we're moving. So this is why I kept on running it. But we're getting up into the upper 40s and 50s with this mid-January. So by tournament time, I expect we'll be across the board mid-50s, maybe approaching the 60s on it. I hope. I hope that's where we get to. All right, so yeah, we're gonna stick with it. We're gonna, we're just gonna take our lumps as we, uh, we're just gonna take our lumps as we go through the conference season. I expect this is gonna be difficult with what we're doing, um, but you know we got a long term plan, so we'll see how it works. Oh, and we won eighty one seventy eight. Jamal Bacon with eighteen points. Yes, sir, that worked. 
We went into it. We went on the road into Death Valley against the top ten Clemson Tigers, and we got out of there with the eighty-one seventy-eight victory. So now I'm feeling good. <clears throat> I'd like to prove it a few more times. I would like to know what was the anomaly. Was the anomaly, was the the weird game, was that the game at Chapel Hill or was that the game in Death Valley? Which one, which one of these games doesn't look like the others? You know what I mean? Uh, I think that's Sesame Street. (laughs) One of these things is not like the other one. And I don't know how many more chances we're going to get to figure that out. It looks like we've got maybe NC State and Duke on the road. But of course we've got other ACC games on the road, so maybe they're not necessarily against top 10 opponents, but we should have a fairly good idea of whether or not it works. All right, Virginia, 6-11. and 11. If we lose here, it's a bad sign. Okay, we made it work. Davin, God. And even Bacon, that was, to me, that was a position that we needed the most on the team was a two guard. How many times has Bacon showed up on there as one of the top scorers? He's crushing it. But Davenport really has been the star of the team. In MIA, somebody put up a poster. Where is Chris Cole? Like, is he not on the team? Did I screw this up and he graduated or transferred or something? Chris Cole's on the team, right? Chris Cole, you're right here. Bro, where are you at? What are you doing? Uh, Ten points a game, three rebounds a game. Uh, He's had double digits about half the time. Okay. Maybe he's playing well and they're just not pulling his stats out of the hat for whatever reason. Who knows? But Jamie Davenport is really looking like the MVP of this year's team. And, you know, I mean, Chris Cole was second team all ACC last year, I believe. Maybe we got two uh, second team all ACC players. Maybe we just have one. Maybe Jamie Davenport's the only one. We'll figure it out. But he looks great right now. Let's see what it looks like when Florida State rolls into Louisville. The Seminoles coming in 11 and 7 overall, 3 and 4 in the ACC, playing against your Louisville Cardinals. There's Chris Cole. There's our man. So that was a guard dominated game. That was London. That was Chris Cole showing up, making things happen. Davenport took the night off, let the guards do his uh, heavy lifting for him, and the cards take care of the Knolls. So here we are. Uh, <laughs> Top of the conference, six and one. Six and one. Making it happen. Alright, so here's another one of the big ones. NC State on the road. This will tell oh, and Duke, North Carolina. Was that a three four game? They're both five and two, so I mean <laughs> they're not top of the conference. They're not 6 and 1 in the conference. They they both lost two games. One of them's now lost three games. But the Cardinals are going into PNC Arena facing the Wolfpack, bringing the press, trying to come out of it still only one loss on the season. Let's see if we can make it happen or if the Wolfpack can take advantage of the home court and uh get out of here with the win. And they did. Davenport tried. He he put up the double-double. Greenberg tried, too, off the bench. But we'll take our lumps. That's a good team. We're on the road. We're we're really good, but we're not elite. And so when you're really good, you still lose road games against really good teams, and that's what just happened. And now now we're going to play Wake Forest. We're number 15. They're number 20. But we're at home, and so hopefully that flips. If we're really good, that flips. 15 and 2, 15 and 3, these teams are dead even on paper. Dead even on paper. Look, North Carolina's just crushing people. 
Duke lost at Pitt, but an uh, unranked Pitt. North Carolina might win the championship. All right, so let's see if we flip this at home. Flip the script. Run them out of the yum. Demon Deacons, get out. Back to North Carolina, wherever you came from. 71-54. And again, it's Davenport. This guy doesn't quit. It's always Jamie Davenport. It's going to be Jamie Davenport all season, all year. we got two more years of this guy. He's not going anywhere. Jamie Davenport, baby. Mm. When we get to that end-of-season transfer screen, remind me, don't lose Jamie Davenport. Now we got the Hurricanes. The Hurricanes think they're number eight. They got more losses overall, more losses on the ACC. They do have a higher net, so I would be curious to look at the schedule. But this is a big game. And if this is a win, it's off to the races. It's off to the races, and it's an elite. It's a competition for the Elite Eight. We're getting there. If this is a win. If this is a loss, you know, we're, we're a Sweet 16 type of team. If this is a win, we're going for it. Hurricanes and the Cardinals. And again, it is at home, but we're trying to decide, are we real or are we kind of flaky? Look who shows up. Now it's Chris Cole. There he is with his 8-3. and three. There's London. There's the guards. There's the guard play. 10-point win at home. If you're... All things being equal in this game, if the teams are fairly equal on a neutral court, it's going to be close. A homer, like you've got about a 10-point advantage if you're home and a 10-point disadvantage if you're away. So that tells me like we're right there with these top teams. We're off to the races. We're competing for the Elite Eight this year, period. Could be better. I don't think it'll be worse. Could be better. We're going for it. And this is what, year four? Year three on stream. I think year four overall. Because I simulated the first year where it wasn't any of my players. But now the guys that I recruited are juniors. My first recruiting class are juniors. Okay. Going to fight the uh, fighting Agalias. They look like crap, as usual. Five and 15. Of course, last time I talked smack about the guy, I lost to a 16 seed, so maybe I should keep my mouth shut. Nope, 30-point win. I'll keep running my mouth. Keep on talking. Fighting Agalias are garbage, even at home. 30-point loss. Ran them out of their own building. <clears throat> Whew. Get that dirt off your shoulder. Uh, stretching it out. Let's go. Early February, 2027. 18 and two overall, nine and two in the conference. The ACC Cardinals making moves, playing presses, switching up the strategies, and giving the ACC nightmares. Nightmares. Virginia Tech coming into the Ville. We're giving you nightmares. We're sending you to black, back to Blacksburg, and you're going to dream about us. And you're going to wake up with a cold sweat. It's going to be terrible. Come on. Bring it on, 10 and 10. The Hokies and the Cardinals. What do you got? Let's see it. No. <laughs> no. Get out of the building. You don't belong on the court. You don't belong in the building. You don't belong in the city. You don't belong in the state. Go back from whence you came. Blow it. The card's blowing out the Hokies. 25 points. I'm enjoying this. I'm feeling this press. Did I put the set play percentage back up? I haven't. Thank you for reminding me. I haven't done it yet. I don't know if we're there yet. Let me check the strategy again. Let's see how far along we are. 
So I don't want to bump it up much, but I do want to bump it up a little because I really do feel like it helps you on neutral and away court games. Thank you very much for the reminder, by the way. All right, let's check the strategy. All right, the motion. These guys are figuring it out slowly but surely. Grayson Morris got it. Davenport Keith got it. Yeah, we can... Uh, do I overdo it and go to... Uh, let's just stick with 75. I think 75 is slightly better than 70. 80. Once I get to 80 or 85, sometimes I feel like that's overdoing it. So I'll stick with 75. But thank you very much. <clears throat> let's double check where our press is too. It's still... Yeah. And one last time, check the strategy on that. See what our familiarity with it is up to. All right, so we're we're progressing. We're right in the range that I expect to be it. And we got a month more to go. This is going to work out well. I like it. We will for the tournament, we'll back it down one notch. But right now I want to be for the NCAA tournament. Unless we just crush it in the ACC, which I doubt because we are going to have Duke and North Carolina to contend with. Um and maybe even NC State, who knows, on a neutral court. Now we're going to Duke. So this is a, actually a, an important game to kind of gauge how this is working. And again, in this, I expect to, I, I told you, I expect to kind of take our lumps. Like we're doing it for a reason. We want, we want the extra experience. We want, and we want to test ourselves. If we win here, we might not change anything for the rest of the season. But let's see. The cards in the Blue Devils coming to you from Cameron Indoor. The Cameron Crazies are already losing their mind. Dickie V's over there, baby. It's the cards in the Blue Devils coming from Durham, North Carolina. Hey, Dickie V goes home sad. 81-67. We're putting it on people this year. That's 14 points <laughs> on Coach K's court. The Cameron Crazies are the Cameron Crybabies right now. They're going back to their dorm rooms and crying into their pillows. 14 points at home. They ate it from the cards. Woo! Let's go! All right, we're not changing anything. We're, we're running this press. We're seeing how far it takes us. Now, North Carolina's the real problem, though. I, I felt like North Carolina was a bigger problem the whole year. Duke, like I said, I called it earlier. They were losing games. Maybe they were on the road, whatever. Let's see what happens here. North Carolina coming into the Yum Center. This is really going to be interesting. Really interesting. If this is neutral or close or whatever... Maybe we have to change something. If we blow them out, we do not change this strategy. They're, this is an elite team. So we think we're a really good team. We think North Carolina is an elite team. Let's see what happens. From Louisville. February 10th, 2027. The North Carolina Tar Heels fly into Louisville to face the 20-2, and two, number 9 ranked Louisville Cardinals from Denny Crump Court in the KFC Yum Center. And Louisville sends them back to the airport. Jamie Davenport says, here's 21 and 17. Boom, this is working, baby. I'm enjoying this. This feels good. That was an ass whooping. Sent North Carolina right back to the airport. Get back on your bus. Don't step on our court. Don't sit in our locker room. Go get back on your bus and drive back to the airport. Get out of the city. You got until midnight. <laughs> this feels good. I'm loving this. Cole got injured. All right, I'll check it out. <clears throat> All right, let's cancel this. We got to go back and check. I missed the injury message on Chris Cole. So, again, let's hope it's... Please don't be anything weird, because if it's not, like, if it's something tame, it, without injury, this is going to be a fun year. No, he's fine. 
All right, so maybe you were talking about the last game. You might have been talking about the last game, and maybe he already got through that injury. But luckily, it, it wasn't bad, so. Dude, we're, we're rolling right now. Don't slip against Pitt. This is a good team. This is a team that's fighting for their tournament lives. Don't slip. You got to bring it. Don't slip. You got to bring it. 18-point win on the road. 18-point win on the road. This is what I'm talking about. That's why we push the the play percentage. That's why we want, we want to run set plays on the road. 18 points on the road against a decent team. Yeah, so in the Duke game. All right, yeah, that's cool. It must have been a short-term injury because it didn't stop me. I missed it. Thanks for pointing it out. Um, I just didn't see it, but apparently it didn't affect us too badly. And now we're sitting at number six, and we are staring down the barrel of potentially another one, one or two seed for sure. Uh, it's going to come down to what happens in the ACC tournament between us North Carolina, NC State, and Duke. And we can't slip up on the road. And again, this schedule is back heavy with road games. So we're going to have a lot of tests here to make sure that we don't screw up, we don't slip up, and we don't lose to a, a team that's not as good as us. Because I still don't feel comfortable saying that this is an elite team, but this is an extremely good team. This might not be one of the top five teams in the country, but it's absolutely top 10. That's where we're at. And we're ranked number six. So I had a problem with where the game had us ranked earlier in the year. Number six, that feels right to me. On the road against Georgia Tech. Feels like a trap game. I can't lie. You ever get that, that feeling in your gut? Feels like we got to show up. Got to Got to show up to Atlanta. Don't get overconfident. Bring it. Bring your 40 minutes. 84-75. Okay, so it was a little bit closer, but we're still kicking. We're still winning. And Jamie Davenport won't let us lose. He won't let us lose. He's a sophomore, and he's still out there saying, get on my back. I'll carry you across the finish line. We're not losing. We're not losing to Georgia Tech. It's not happening. Jamie Davenport, the man. It's a good stream. It's a good stream. It's a good season. Really, really like this team. Now let's go. February 20th. Still only lost two games. One was on the road to North Carolina when I wasn't paying attention. The other one I don't even remember off the top of my head. Was it NC State? Or Wake? Or Clemson? I think it was one of those. But now we got NC State at home, so if they did beat us in North Carolina, time for a little bit of payback. North Carolina is the only remember the only uh, loss that I remember off the top of my head. Sometimes it's hard when you're streaming, when you're just given you know um, stream of consciousness or whatever. When you're just talking nonstop, you don't remember things very well. But now we've got the Wolf Pack coming into the Yum Center, number seventeen in the net, number three in the net. The Wolfpack and the Cardinals from downtown Louisville. Three, two, one, go. And get out. And there's Chris Cole again. There's Jason London. Jason London with 19 points. We don't expect that dude to be scoring all the points. We want him to run the show. And tonight he said, you know what? I'm going to show up. We're running 75% motion. You kept me on, you get me on the back cut. I'll just lay it in. Jason London, 19 points. Feeling good. Woo. 15 and 2. We only have three ACC games left. All right, so at Syracuse. So here's a tough one. And why are they not ranked? You're 17 and 10, 11 and 6 in the ACC, and 23rd in the net. Why are you not ranked? This is a good team. 
and this is by far uh, a tougher matchup than we've had lately because we're going on the road, obviously. But this is absolutely a losable game. <clears throat> and to be honest, like to where I think this team is at, I won't even be disappointed if they lose this game. This is a good team. Uh, I think I think we're a better team on a neutral court. I would expect to win this game. Uh, but on the road, yeah, on the road, this is a toss-up. And, and this will tell us something about our team. Like, are we on the verge or, or are we a little bit ahead of the curve? But this will tell us something. Hey, we're a little uh, – Jamie. I'll tell you who's ahead of the curve is Jamie Davenport. Goodness gracious, this guy can't stop. He can't stop. He got the double-double. We went at Syracuse by six. We're ahead of the curve. We're not shooting for the Elite Eight anymore. We're shooting for the Final Four. We're shooting for the Final Four. We really need to avoid North Carolina. I do not want to face North Carolina on a neutral court. So we got Duke at home. Okay, this is a game. We got them in Cameron, and now they're coming to look for some revenge. They're 13-5 and five in conference. Let's see, was, was the game at Cameron a fluke? Are they going to come back and upset us? Or are we going to just put our foot down and say, no, we're elite. Card, shut your mouth, put us in the next level, we're elite. That's what they can say with this game. I'm not saying they will. I don't know. Let's find out. The Blue Devils and the Cardinals from downtown Louisville, Kentucky, on the banks of the Ohio River. They, they, they whooped our ass. They were pissed off, and they came in and took their revenge. So now we're back to fishing for an Elite Eight. We're not that team. We tried to be. We might have been. We were kind of close. That's not who we are, though. I'll go back and check. We'll go back and check the box score because that was an absolute beatdown. Like, I, I thought they might win. I didn't think they would beat us by 20, 25, whatever it was. Was there anything weird about the game, foul-wise, minutes-wise? No, nothing. Three, oh, okay, so 9-19... Yeah, nothing crazy from three. 35 to 38 rebounds. They only turned the ball over nine times. We turned it over 15. <clears throat> they had 25 assists. Yeah, I, I don't really know what to say. It looks like our starters, plus minus wise, were pretty even. And when our backups came in, they just got blown off the court. I don't know. That's a weird one. Haven't seen that very often. <clears throat> uh, we're just going to let that go. I don't think that there's anything that I can really take away from that game. It does lower my expectations to some degree. But I don't know. Like based on the information that I get looking out of that box score, I don't think I don't know that there's anything actionable that I can do differently. So let's just keep it going. We got one more league game at Virginia Tech. If we win this, we win the conference outright. And they're 12 and 16, so hopefully we win it. Let's not have any hangover. Let's figure it out. Um, you can't be thinking about last week. That was an anomaly. That was a one-off. We had one bad night. All right, tough road win. Those are tough road wins in the ACC. That's fine. Still feel good about it. Let's get into the tournament. <clears throat> 17 and 3. So, ACC banner. 
hanging up in the yum. Let's go ahead and make sure we get that straightened out. What do we have inbox wise? Uh, uh, declaring for the draft. What? <laughs> All right, so Marlon Marks, who was our transfer backup point guard, declared. He was like top 25, so that's understandable. And Marcel Bailey, who was ranked number 26, we redshirted him and he declared. Whatever, that's fine. We knew we were going to lose at least one of those centers. Whatever. Both those guys were pretty borderline. It's kind of unlucky to lose both of them, but whatever. See, North Carolina is still what I'm worried about. Odell Graham. Mm. Okay. See how it goes. Turning time, baby. Let's get into it. The ACC champs. Who's coming for the crown? It sits right here. You're not taking it. Number five in the country. We're so close to that one seed. The ACC tournament is 100% going to determine our seed. And we're not going to play till Friday, I think. It's Tuesday, March 7th. I don't think we play till Friday. Couple more days. We're coming toward this tournament. I'm feeling it. Jamie Davenport's feeling it. I tell you what, I want to see end of season awards. I want to see where that guy lands in the ACC. I think he's first team all ACC. Well, he's probably going to be second team all ACC. But I think for the impact he's had on the conference up to this point, I think he deserves first team ACC. He's going to get screwed. All right, Tigers and Cardinals on a neutral court. Let's see how this works out. North Carolina still, North Carolina just looks so elite. They look so much better than everybody else. And look, Duke struggling to get past Wake Forest. Miami and NC State have a, eh, not a close game. But North Carolina, 101-80. to That team's scary. Let's see what the Cardinals have against the Tigers. Number 25, Clemson. Number 5, Louisville in the ACC tournament. Woo -hoo -hoo -hoo. Close call. Close call, but we pull it out. Okay. Three-point win. I'll take it. Duke for the third time this year. We beat them in Cameron. They beat us at the Yum. It was embarrassing both ways. Let's sort it out on a neutral court in the ACC tournament with a trip to the ACC finals on the line. Let's do it for real. Let's throw down. Let's go. The Blue Devils and the Cardinals. What do you got, Dukies? What do you got, Dickie V? Oh, oh, diaper dandy. What do you got, Dukies? Hey. What do you got? It's Duke and Louisville, the Cardinals and the Blue Devils. And the Cardinals just whooped your ass. Oh, the Dukies are going home crying. The diaper dandies need their diapers. <laughs> and crying into their pillows, baby. Hey, what a win. Louisville takes out Duke. Here we go. <clears throat> the one I told you the whole time. This is a... Oh, there was Cherokee... Uh, there was Cherokee Alleysworth for Arizona. Did y'all see that? The dude that tore his MCL up and we tried to bring in as a transfer and was out for like 300 days. North Carolina and Louisville. They're elite. If we can even like even just compete with them on a neutral court, we have a chance because there's no guarantee that we face up against each other in the NCAA tournament and they can always slip up. So if we can just compete with this team, then we're really good and pushing on the ceiling of like, championship competitors 
But if they beat us, if they put a whooping on us, we're a Sweet 16 Elite Eight team. <sighs> Come on, Davenport. Drag us across the finish line, baby. The Tar Heels and the Cardinals. On a neutral court. By nine. Hang the banner. Right over there. It's like WrestleMania, right? Do I got to put my foot up on something? Right over there. Hang the banner. ACC champs. 80-71. to 71. The Cardinals take down the Tar Heels. Let's go! Sorry if that clap really screwed up any of the sound. <laughs> I got really excited. Let's go. Hey, so I am going to hit view show, so watch your sound real quick. Check your speakers. Check your speakers. Three, two, one, selection show. I'll do it quick. Oh, I don't even think the sound hit. All right, let's watch the show. We'll see where we're at, and then we'll skip the rest of it. All right, which 16 seed are we going to lose to this year? <laughs> Cincinnati got the number one overall seed. as the number two team in the country. They're 30 and 5. Who'd you beat, Cincinnati? Did you beat Duke twice? Did you beat UNC on a neutral court by 10? Who'd you beat? Give me a break. Richmond with the four seed. Our boy over here at Arizona. Do, do not count out Arizona. When there's a player this good, sometimes they make it happen. Arizona might make a run. I'm not even the two seed. I just beat you on a neutral court. You lost six games. I lost, what, three? And you're ranked ahead of me? I'm filing a complaint with Gary, officially. Chris, mark this time around the video. Complaint time. It's a bug. Give me a break. I'm not even the three. Am I even a one seed? So I'm the worst one seed. Really, at 29 and three, with that record against those teams. And. I get Duke for a fourth time if I make the Elite Eight. Oh, what a screw job. I got hosed. Hey, everybody wants to yell at the uh, selection committee and talk about, like, bias and human error and all that. Look what happens when you let a computer do it. Same exact thing. Everybody makes mistakes. Everybody has a difference of opinion. Now we got to go out there and prove them wrong. Let's get pissed off. Hey, post it on the bulletin board. Show Jamie Davenport. Show Jamie Davenport. They only think we're the fourth best team in the country right now. See how see how he reacts. See how Chris Cole reacts. Let's go. We lost as a one seed last year to a 16. We ought to be pissed off and ready to fight this year. Let's do it. I don't know if we play our first game Thursday or Friday. It looks like Friday. <clears throat> I don't want to talk about a 116 seed. I just want to go past this and win it and not think about it. So I'm not going to get excited about this. I'm just going to hit the button. And I swear, if I lose it, like the stream is over. I'm just going to turn it off, and I'll see you guys next time. I'm scarred. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know if y'all are picking up on that. I'm scarred, and I'm hurt, and it feels bad. And if I lose this, I'm just going to turn the stream off, and I'll catch y'all next time. You, you can talk to me on Discord or whatever. That's fine. If I lose this, I'm just turning the stream off.
I can't deal with it back to back. Whew, never been more relieved to beat a 16 seed. <laughs> 20 point win in the first round. Let's go. Auburn upsets Illinois. Okay. Nothing crazy. Both good teams. Neutral court. Anything can happen. All right. Now we get Oregon. All right. So we're rebounding. We're feeling like ourselves. Whew. I want to see one more time. I just want to get a. I want to put my eyes on where this defense is. The offense is fantastic. This full court man's feeling pretty good. We're going to back off at one notch. And we're going to go. And I think we got I think we got some run. The Oregon Ducks. All right, let's go. Back in the second round. Louisville Cardinals, Oregon Ducks in the NCAA tournament, March 19th, 2027. And we're How? How? How does that happen? Twice in a row. Two years in a row. How does that happen? There's no way. We're cursed. You know, they fouled out Tremaine Grace. And they fouled out London. And our backups were garbage. And that's pretty much it. They out-rebounded us pretty badly. Ninety one to eighty five. Didn't we play Oregon in the regular season? Maybe not, maybe that was last year. Two years in a row as a number one seed. First round loss, second round loss. Feels bad, bros. Feels bad. <clears throat> 91 to 85. Wow. That's not great defense. I mean, it's a high pace, and we, we had a lot of high pace games. Should probably have the offensive pace set just a little bit lower until our talent catches up to what we're trying to do. A lot of this will get fixed with more talent, but... Oh, that was rough. Oof. All right. Well, here we go. Tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to sim to the end of the season. We'll see who wins it. Oh, God, that sucks. Well, at least we got the ACC, right? Like, we're, we're moving in the right direction. But the thing is, like, it's slowing down our growth of prestige so much. Like, last year, bare minimum, we should have been elite uh, Sweet 16. And this year, we should have been elite 8. And instead, we go out in the first and second rounds. So... We're, Last year, we should have gone up to about 75, and then this year would have put us up to a low to mid-80s. And instead, we're still going to be struggling in like the top, like the high 60s, low 70s. At best, probably high 60s. We're going to watch this. Uh, watch your speakers. Three, two, one. Oh, it didn't even do anything. Never mind. And then I give you a little extra. That's what I do. All right, individual Odell Graham, of course. 
And then the Kansas player, Reggie Moore. So Kansas must have won it. They usually give this to whoever wins it. Odell Graham's a player of the year. Peter Finley, Cincinnati, Wes Miller. What is this? It's a weird... It's a weird award season. Here's your second teamers. Brennan Lyons transfers out to Syracuse and is an immediately a second team All American. We don't even get a first teamer. We're going nowhere. That's strictly because we have so many players who have similar talent that they kind of feed off of each other. Like a lot of these teams, like Odell Graham obviously is a generational fantastic player. He's great. Um, a lot of these other teams, like, they have three or four average players and, like, one really great player, and so they eat up all the stats and they win those awards. So that's why you're not seeing any of our guys in those teams. We need somebody who's really outstanding uh, because we have so much um, just similar ability levels. But we won Coach of the Year again. Whatever. Drives me crazy. Losing in the second round to Oregon, 91 to 85. Give me a break. Guys, I'm going to call it right here. I do feel like this is kind of a natural end point once we end this season because everything else that I do for the rest of this year sort of affects next season. Uh, so I'm going to call it right here. Uh, thank you all so much for participation in the stream. I hope you all enjoyed it. I uh, hope you guys, whether you're catching it on YouTube or Twitch Live, whether you were able to chat in game, whether you want to chat on Discord, like reach out to me. And like I said earlier, if you want to stream, go stream, go have some fun. You know, let that personality fly on the stream and uh, just enjoy it. And other people enjoy watching it with you. And um, let's just keep on growing the community, keep on growing this game. This is still maybe the twentieth time I've said it, either live on a stream or on a video recording. This is my favorite version of the game in years. They've added so much to it. It runs so smoothly. I'm having a fantastic time. If you're not on it yet, get on wolverinestudios.com, download the early access if it's still available. I actually got an email today. I think that early access may be ending soon. Uh, so check it out if you want. Uh, but also jump into our Discord, join the CBGM, We've got 110, 120 human teams, uh, and we'd love some more. Uh, the more competition, the more fun that we have, and the more people in the community, the more ideas we get. And that's what the game is based on, is community ideas and uh, just general interest and activity. So get involved. Thank you all for watching. Catch you next time.